Now here's an interesting problem in our textbook number 30, exercise number 30, multiple choice question. Finding the area of this parallelogram with a given base and height, the kind of problem that makes you proud to be an American. Why? Because we've got the most bizarre measuring system on the planet. We have four feet, two inches, two feet, three inches. Wow, base times height. And we have the four choices above. Well, let's work through it. We're gonna do it more than one way so we can, well, let's just look at conversions here. One method, probably the best, is to convert the two measurements into inches. And easy enough, as explained right here. And then when we multiply, we're going to come up with square inches. Now, if your eye fixes on that 1,350, you might be looking there, but you would be wrong because those are inches, not square inches. The author is just being a trickster here, looking out for units. So let's, well, let's take a little sidebar here because we're going to have to convert square inches to square feet. And if you don't, you may not know it's 144. So let's a little review why. We know that there's one foot in 12 inches. That might be a conversion factor. If I were to square the conversion factor, meaning square the entire expression, I could distribute the exponent across here. So I'd say 1 squared is to a square foot is 12 squared is to um, square inches. And of course, you can see now clearly 1 square foot is 144 square inches. You need to know that because when you do your old dimensional analysis, as you do all the way back um, in earlier in, in your chemistry class, oh, got an answer up there already. We'll take this one, three, five, zero, and we'll divide by 144, and we've got our nine and three quarters. So we can show our solution. And clearly our answer is D. But that's not good enough because we want to see, well, was there another way to do it? And of course there was. You, if you really love fractions, and none of you do, um, I'm going to change this into feet and we can solve directly for our answer. This is four and one sixth foot. This is two and one quarter feet or three twelfths of a foot. Gotta love that uh, English system. And I'm going to represent these as little binomials. And then let's just do the foil. And if we expand this, we can we now see first outer. Uh, one four times a quarter is one. So it looks like we can just add all this add all this together. And I've got 9 and 9 24 square feet, which, if I convert to decimal, you all know is 9.375. The other third way of doing it, I guess we could have made these into decimal feet to begin with. And in so doing, and, and again, I, I could take uh, 2 feet and I'd have to add to it 1 sixth, the fraction 1 sixth. 0.16 repeating. The problem with this is I get a repeating decimal. It still would work out if you carried enough digits in your calculator and your answer would end up in square feet and you'd come out directly with this. But I'd probably, I'd have to say inches was probably the best solution, but you see there's more than one way to solve this problem. And now we're going to calculate the area of this figure, and this figure is a parallelogram. And we've got the given sides, a pair of 15s, op another opposite sides, 8s. I could use either for bases, but I'm going to use this for a base, 15, because I'm going to find the area when the angle at A is 20 degrees and when it is 50 degrees. Now, clearly, the height is changing. Therefore, since the area of a parallelogram is base times height, if I use 15 for both cases, it's fixed, but the height is changing. So this will be a smaller area than this one. We just have to solve for the height. And for that, we're going to use our trig. 
if I'm looking at angle A down here, small height, large height. So let's work on the 20 degree angle, shall we? And I know the sine of 20 degrees is H over H, opposite over hypotenuse. And then I'm going to do a little bit of algebra to arrange that. Now I'm going to drag my calculator over here. Um, in case we've forgotten how to use this, 8 times the sine of 20. Some of your calculators will work fine 8 times. Then I can enter 20, perform the sine function, equals. And that's going to give me this value. Now, all I'd have to do at that point is multiply times 15. And rounding to the nearest tenth, that would be 41. We can see here about 41 square units. However, I want to advise all of you, sometimes your calculators, your, um, some of them don't know orders of operations as well. This one you could have just as well said 20, taken the sine of 20, then multiplied times 8. And that would give you that that would give you your height, and then you can multiply times 15. And again, that would give you your area. So let's do the next one here. And um, let's see how it changes. It's going to get a little bit bigger when I move it this way. And that makes sense. Sine of 50 is h over h. 8 times the sine of 50. Now you know how to do the calculator work. I would leave those numbers in the register, but you can see this number is more than twice as big. And I get an area that's about 91.9 .9 square units.